Hey, got our ride. We'll see you. That's how you gotta, gotta have them out to open them up. Right. Psalm chapter 44. So I think I like being corrected. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Psalm chapter 44, verse 20 and 21. 21 especially here. All right, tonight's message, I want to title is What God Knows That We Don't. It's been a number of years I've preached a message along this line. And so I, some of it will be the same, but uh, it's important. I think it's an interesting thought that God knows more than we do. He's eternal. I've heard it said this way, and I don't know which one to really how to look at. It's really not that important. That time, some people say that time is outside of God. Or time is part of God. I think it's the second one. I think time is part of God. And so everything that happens, he knows about. Because it's part of him. Time is part. It's a part of being created in the beginning. Different from the rest of eternity. Like we're in this area. We're so used to time. Yeah. We're used to talking in words and situations. Uh, using time. Time. Like what happens when it's all over? Well, it's all eternity anyway. It's all part of eternity. Just a strange thought. It really kind of makes you think and wonder about things. And, and the conclusion you should come to is God is far wiser and greater than we are. By far. By far. And he, out of his love and his mercy, he draws us in to him and his life. What a God. What a God to be a part of all this. He draws us in. Psalm chapter 44. A few verses that deal with this issue. What God knows that we don't. Because there's a lot of things God knows that we don't. <laughs> Chapter 44, and verse, oh, verse 20. Uh, verse 20 says, If we have forgotten the name of our God, we have, if we have forgotten the name of God, or stretch out our hands to a, to a strange God. Verse 20 is saying, really, everybody has a God or gods. Everybody does. But is it the right one? Is it the real one? So everyone has a God. Verse 20, if we have forgotten the name of our God, we stretch out our hands to a strange God. Verse 21, shall not God search this out? See where we are, if we're really searching for the right God. For, now here's the part that really applies. For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. That'll be one of the main things I'm talking about tonight. Since we're in Psalm 44, now turn though to Isaiah 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 24. I'm just talking about the greatness of God. Because God does know more than we do. Isaiah 44 verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, from the beginning, he knew you. I am the Lord that maketh, maketh all things. And that includes this concept of time that maketh all things, that spreadeth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that he goes on, that frustrated the tokens of the liars. <laughs> and he knows who the liars are. That frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh the miners mad. And that means insane, really, is the word mad there. That turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. <laughs> we see that happening today. People that call themselves educated and wise really are just the opposite. Yes. <laughs> Verse 26. That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. And those, we have a part in getting the message out here. That saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof. I like that when God makes things better. The decayed places thereof, he changes, makes better. Heavenly Father, please help me as I preach tonight. Again, may the Lord be glorified, Lord. Please, please, may that happen. And may everyone here tonight get something that's really just for them, that'll encourage them, that'll help them, maybe even convict them. So we pray that you'll bless tonight. Help me as I preach, please. In Jesus' name, I do ask it. Amen. Amen. What God knows that we know. First of all, general thought here is that God knows the end from the beginning. He is everything. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, is one of just one of the many, many references to the, about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. That's the part here we're talking about. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. All of time is seen by God at once, at one time. God sees everything. He sees the past, he sees the present, and God can even see the future. I've never been able to really comprehend that. How can God know what's going to happen before it happens? But he does. He does. That's why he can prepare for those times, too, and, and do what he needs to do ahead of time. So nothing takes you by surprise. Nothing at all. To think of the wonder of our God, the greatness of our God. He knows the past, of course. He remembers every bit of past. There's one man I hear once in a while in one of the radio programs, Federer, that's it. Is it Bill Federer? Uh, Federer. What a mind he has. He can go through history and just recite so many things after another, so many facts. Amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. Bill, I think it's Bill Federer. Look up that name on your computer, Federer, and uh, see what the, the wisdom that, not the wisdom, I'm sorry, the knowledge that that guy has. He has wisdom too, but we're talking about the knowledge he has. What he can say, the things, things he remembers about history and everything, it's amazing. But anyways, but God knows everything. He knows more than Bill Federer. Amen. That's how good God is. All of the time is seen by God at once. Isn't that a curious thought? Prophecy is history written and revealed, revealed ahead of time. That's one of the things that proves God because he can tell people what to write and what's going to happen in the future. And it all comes true exactly right. Now, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, talks about that, refers to the Lord here. It says, Jesus, speaking in the first half of the verse, says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The, be well, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Now, he's saying that about himself. That's quite a, if I can use this word, quite a boast there, isn't it? For somebody to say, I know I, I've been here forever. Mm -hmm. What a thing to say. Mm -hmm. But God can say it. You know what? He can say it. Because it's true. Yeah. It's true. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Who said this? The Lord. Yeah. Say it, the Lord. Which is, present tense, which was, past. And which is to come, prophecy, future, the Almighty, the Almighty God. Amen. So number one in my little outline tonight, what God knows that we don't. He knows everything. That's what he knows. Start there. He knows absolutely everything. He's the end of the beginning. He knows everything is going on. He knows how it's going to turn out. He knew I would be a pastor here for 43 years before I knew it. He knew you'd be here on, let's see, this is December 18th, about 7.38 now. Uh, he knew you'd be here. He knew you'd be here when... 2,000 years ago when the Lord was here. He knew it before that. He knew it before he created everything. He said, well, then why, why? That's a big why question, isn't it? Then why did God know that or uh, do that if he, he knew it ahead of time? Because he wants us. He, he wants something from us that he's given us only the potential to, and we make a difference. What's the difference? We can love God. See? There's the difference. That's one of the reasons. Well, let's go on to my point. I, that kind of got off the subject here a little bit. All right, here's a second thought that God knows that we don't. He knows who will and who will not get saved. Isn't that a curious thought? John chapter 6, verse 64, Gospel of John. He knows who will and who will not get saved. Now, he did die for everybody. That's right. Now, don't, don't uh, forget that. Even though he knew some of them would not get saved, which I think is a curious thought. He knows not everyone's going to get saved. Mm -hmm. John chapter 6, verse 64. Potentially, though, everyone can be forgiven. Uh, in other words, everybody can repent of their sins and by faith believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, why did they do that? He gave us a free will. A free will because without a free will, people will say that. You know, why, why is all these problems? Why? Because we have to make a choice for or against God. We have a free will. And without free will, love does not exist. Right. See, love would not exist if there wasn't a free will. If there wasn't a free will, love would not exist. God would have made us just like robots. He'd push the button like you say, we'd sing Amazing Grace. When we're supposed to, we do what we're supposed to. But God wants us to want to serve Him. There's the key. God wants us to love Him. 
And so there he's given us this thing called will. So we will use our will. We'll make the right choice to believe on him Amen. and to serve him and to repent of our sins so we, we can believe on him. It's so important. Who will and won't be saved? John chapter 6, verse 64. Now, by the way, let me say this too. Don't stop praying for people because you don't know who is and who is not going to be saved. We need to keep praying for people. That's right. Why doesn't God reveal that to us? I don't know. But I know everything he does is right. Amen. And I don't get worried about it. Amen. We need to pray for people to be saved. Amen. John 6, 64, although we don't know who is, who will be, and who won't be, but we need to pray for them. But there are some, John 6, verse 64, there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. There's a prophecy that uh, the Lord knew at the very beginning, the beginning of creation, the beginning of this time. He knew all this was going to happen. He knew who was going to betray him. He knows everything in the future. Now, should we? what should we do then? We should pray for people. Christian, don't stop praying for people to be saved. I don't know how many people you pray for to be saved. I don't know how many times a, a day or a week you might pray for people to be saved. But keep praying. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever stop. God, But God knows something we don't. He knows who will get saved and who won't get saved. But he doesn't tell us, pray only for those that are going to get saved. He doesn't say that in his Bible, does he? It's kind of interesting thought, isn't it? I thought maybe you think, here's a Sunday night crowd. Here are the really smart ones here on Sunday night. So who will and who won't get saved? God knows, but we don't. He does not reveal that to us. So we need to keep praying for people. Don't stop. The heart we have for our family and people that God brings into our lives. To witness to them and see them say, what a, what a burden that is. You know why that's a good thing? Because that shows God's heart. Mm -hmm. That shows God's heart. So what does God know that we know? He knows who's going to get saved and who will not get saved. And I think that's an interesting talk. But he doesn't tell us. Because we need to have a burden for everybody. Just like the Lord died for everybody. And has a burden for everyone everybody to be saved. But they choose against him, and that makes them, of course, guilty then. But anyways, that's one another thing God knows. Who will and who won't get saved? Interesting. Number three, another thing that God knows that we know is he knows a person's heart. He knows a person's heart. We don't know that. Since we're in John, just turn to John chapter 2, verse 24. Back up a little bit in the same book. You know, I can be fooled. I, I'm, I've been fooled over the years, and... Hopefully I'm not fooled as easily now as I would when I was younger. But God knows a person's heart. God knows who the hypocrites are. God knows who those are sincerely calling out to him and sincerely seeking him. God knows that. God knows the real person. Because he knows people's hearts. We don't know for sure. That's right. We can make some good guesses sometimes. Many times you can make the right discernment and judgments. That's a better word. Uh, we can make the right judgments about people and be right about things. But there's many times we're wrong about things also, aren't they? First thought comes up to mind is, how many times do people promise they come to church? <laughs> you talk to them during the week. Hey, I'm going to be there this Sunday. I'm going to come out to church. And how many times did they not show up? That's right. Or how many times did they show up? Which is a very a small number. But we were, we believed them. You know, yeah, I just want to say, because we want to believe it. Yeah. We don't want to think people are lying to us. Now, things might change as the week goes by. I don't know. Things do happen sometimes. But God knows the real heart, and he knows when people are lying. Nobody can fool God. Nobody can deceive God. You might say, a person might say certain words, and other people might believe them, but God knows they're lying in their heart. He knows the real them. A person's heart, thoughts, and motives... God knows all those things. John chapter 2, verse 24. John 2, 24. And we don't know that. And we can be fooled. And I'm sorry, don't mind that somebody fools you sometime. If somebody's lied to you about things, just let it go. Don't let it ruin your joy. Don't let it ruin your good, good attitude. But John chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew, there's that thought, he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. And that's said kind of in a negative way, isn't it? 
Hebrews chapter 4. Let's turn to another verse here, too. Hebrews 4, verse 12. God knows the heart. Yeah. You know, like I say, people can fool us. They can say things to us and make some promises that they're going to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, they can fool us. You can believe them. Sometimes you, you might believe them. But God knows the heart. He knows when people are lying to him, not telling the truth. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You got kind of along this same line here. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Now, the next phrase here. Next phrase. And is a discerner of the what? The thoughts and intents and tensions of the heart. So the word of God really shows and reveals the real them. If they're being honest or not being honest, it discerns. It, it shows who is right or wrong. It shows things. It shows about the thoughts. God knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you do the same thing too. Sometimes I think now, I said this, but is it the best way to say something? Or if somebody asks you a question, you really would rather not answer in some way. And you kind of want to avoid that. For, for, in fact, it can be done for the right reasons too. There were times the Lord didn't answer people's questions either. Uh, and you, you, wanna, you don't want to be dishonest. You, you don't want to be uh, hypocrite. You don't want to be insincere. But you also want to, there's other things involved where you might want to uh, bring out a certain thought. Or, you know, you shouldn't say something personal, confidential. There's so, so many things in, in, involved in this. Let me get on to the next subject here. But the thoughts and the hearts of, of people. The real them, God knows. Yeah. When they come forward and pray about it for salvation, sometimes someone will walk out, kneel down and pray about salvation for somebody, or about for themselves. But God knows if they mean it or not. And he'll put them through situations like the rich young ruler, like we had this morning. I talked about that in Sunday school time. Well, you think about that. <laughs> that God knows the heart. He knows what people like. We don't. We don't always know what the Lord does. Does that scare you at least a little bit? <laughs> to think that God knows what your thoughts are. When you make some promises, you say certain things. That God is the discerner of your thoughts. He's reading your heart. You might say one thing, but he knows your heart. So interesting, interesting. The word of God there is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Of the heart. God knows that. Another thought tonight. God knows future sins and failures in our lives. Future sins and failures. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Matthew 26, verse 31. Beginning, beginning thir verse 31. He knows the things we, we haven't done yet, the sins we have not committed yet. He knows about them ahead of time. You think about certain people in the Bible, Peter. Peter denied the Lord with an oath. And the Lord knew that. He was still going to use Peter. Uh, the Lord knew about Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. Uh, Jesus knew about Judas Iscariot ahead of time. Jesus knew Pharaoh's reaction in the Old Testament there in the book of Exodus. When Moses withstood Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And, and God knew ahead of time what Pharaoh's reaction was going to be. It was going to harden his heart going to harden his heart there. We see many stories in the Old Testament as well as the New. Let's look up this one now. Matthew chapter 26 verse 31. That God knows our future sins and our failures. And by the way, Christian, there's a difference. There's a difference between sin and failure. Uh, sins are done intentionally. Failures are done ignorantly. Sometimes we do things that aren't right, that aren't the best. We're not aware of it though. But sins are done intentionally. Matthew chapter 26 now verse 31. As the dead said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. Hmm. Everyone's going to be offended because of him this night. He knew that ahead of time. He knew what the reaction would be. All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. He's making an Old Testament application mm -hmm. in his life right here. Verse 32. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered, said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Peter, you shouldn't have said that. That's bragging. 
praying. And then verse 34, Jesus saying unto him, here's another prophecy, because he knew uh, Peter's failure here. He knew Peter was not going to follow through what he promised to do. Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times, Peter. He said, you've never denied, denied me? You can deny me three times tonight. Verse 35, Peter said to him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Peter, don't be so stubborn like we are. I will not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. That's right. So the others tuned in there too. Not just Peter, right? but all of them. All of them there too. See, Jesus knows our future sins, our future failures, the future things that we're going to do wrong. And he loves us. He cares about us. He uses us anyway. I like that. I like that God will still use us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've gone through, God still can use us. Now, we need to get things right sometimes, all right? We need to do that. But he knows about that already. We don't know that. I don't know the... I'll use the word sin. I don't know the sins I'm going to do this week. Hopefully, I have a clean record. By the time I come in here next Sunday morning, I can say I've gone all seven days and never sinned. That, that you don't believe that, do you? Now, I don't know what I'm going to do this week. I don't know when that car in back of me starts driving on my, my back fender there and starts beeping his horn at me, what my reaction's going to be. I don't know what's going to happen then. I don't know what's going to happen during the week when I'm, I'm kind of tired and groggy and I, uh, somebody go to the post office and the line's too long in the post office. I want to get these things mailed because i got to get over to the church here and i got to do this. i got to get the new, next newsletter going. i got to get all that worked up. And i got to preach two times next Sunday. i got to be ready for that. And Wednesday night Bible study. And we have a memorial service this week going on too. And we're going to go see the Harrison family, see Carol's mom this week. I mean, I'm stressed out already thinking about it, but I need to react the right way. But is it possible I might get a little bit irritated no, the answer is no to that. I say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do this week, what sins I'm going to commit, what things I'm going to do that really, you know, I don't know. But the Lord does. Isn't that curious? The Lord does. He knows already ahead of time what I'm going to do this week and, and where I'm maybe do some kind of sin, have some kind of failure in my life. But the Lord does. The Lord does. Interesting. We, I don't know. God does. God knows more than I do. Hmm. Hmm. Peter, you're going to deny me three times. No, I'm not, Lord. I will die first. What happened? Peter denied him three times. Judas, one of you is a devil. You know what? A betrayer. Judas. Judas. Pharaoh in the Old Testament. That, it's so interesting in the Old Testament there. Pharaoh hardened his heart. God hardened his heart. Because God knew if he put him to this kind of test and made, tried to make him do something, he was going to get more stubborn. He would not humble himself. Humility, stubbornness. So your future sins and failures, all of them, God already knows. But he's chosen to use us anyway in spite of us. Amen. That helps me. I need that. I think every Christian, that's an encouragement. He knows already your failures. Now we need, we need to... Uh, not think, well, because he knows it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. We need to make those things right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But he knows already ahead of time. That's a little embarrassing. But I'm glad he knows, and when, I'm glad he deals with them the way he does for us, with us. So what does God know that we don't know? He knows everything in from the beginning. He knows what happened before time began. He knows what's going to happen after time ends. He knows who will and won't be saved. We don't know that. He knows a person's heart, thoughts, and real motives. We don't know that, but God does. He knows He knows our heart that well. We can lie to others and convince others and fool others, but we can never deceive God. And He knows the future, even all our future faults and sins, all those things. And then also, here's a good thing. What God knows that we don't, the joys awaiting Christians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God knows the joys of waiting Christians. Now we, we know some of it. We can read about it in the Bible. But when we get there, it's going to be far more glorious than we ever thought. Amen. Ever thought. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 9 and 10. 
Heaven's going to be beyond our wildest imaginations. I wonder what some of our good friends, our good Christian friends, have experienced already. Some of them have been around the throne of God for years, or several years, some of our good friends. And they've been up there with the Lord already, waiting for that second coming too. They're coming back with Him, and if it's, if it's long enough, I'll be going up there and coming back too at the same time. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says here, but, but as it is written, in other words, referring to the Old Testament scriptures, but as it is written, I have not seen, you've never seen anything like heaven yet. No, never, never seen anything even close to heaven. I have not seen or ear heard, you know, hearing things, that beautiful music, I always enjoy so much when uh, my wife Carol plays the piano here at church or at home too. It's a beautiful thing to hear. So much different from the, the noise out there in the world that yeah. they call music and the yelling and screaming in their music. And, uh, are they writing, is anybody writing pretty songs anymore? Yeah. I thought about that. Is anybody at all anywhere writing pretty songs anymore? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Our ear can ear heard, but the things we're gonna hear are gonna be beyond our wildest, wildest imagination. Neither have entered the heart of man can think about these things and what how great heaven is going to be. It's beyond that. The things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. Amen. The things heaven. I've heard this said. I don't know. Uh, it could be true. Could not be true. But some people say why God doesn't let let us get a glimpse of heaven? Because if a Christian get a glimpse of heaven, they take their life so they can get there. <laughs> I've heard that over the years. I don't know how true that is or not. But I know in verse number 9 here, it says heaven is beyond, far beyond our wildest imagination. Now verse 10 also. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. We have an insight in all these things. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So we have a certain knowledge and understanding of it. We read about it in the book of Revelation and other parts of place in the Bible too. But one thing God knows uh, that we know is how great heaven's going to be. Now that motivates me. That motivates you, doesn't it? <laughs> Thinking about that joy, how great it's going to be someday. But it says it can be even further greater than that. Our minds are limited. Our minds are limited to the place where we can't even imagine how great heaven's going to be like. Beyond our wildest imagination. My, our brains, our minds, our thoughts have their limits, don't they? They have their limits. And it says heaven's going to be greater than our thoughts can even imagine beyond the limits of our thoughts and our imaginations of heaven. Can I put it any better than that? What God has prepared for them to love Him. Amen. Love Him. The joy is the waiting question. What God knows that we don't, just how great it's going to be. And then also, just a, a thought here, I like this kind of thought, that God knows everything all the time. Everything all the time. Uh, let's see, Psalm chapter 147. God knows everything all the time. Psalm 147, verse 4. God knows everything all the time. I use sometimes, well, in John, yeah, I think it's, oh no, Luke chapter 12 talks about the hairs on our head. God knows the hairs on our head. You know, God knows everything from the telescope to the microscope. I like to use that illustration. I don't know if it's ever been as effective as I thought it might be. But uh, you go out somewhere, you know, especially out in the woods somewhere, out in the fields where well, Hudson, Ohio, we used to go to my aunt and uncle's house out there for family get-togethers. But some of the places, and, and the field, the, all field all around the hills and fields all around there, we go walk around. And some days they were giant, I mean big ant hills. Ant hills. I don't know how many thousands and tens of thousands there must have been on that ant hill. But, you know, as I think about that, God knows what every one of those ants is doing all the time. That's the wonder of the knowledge of the God of the Bible, the God that lives. He knows every little detail of life throughout this universe. That shows the majesty of our God and the unbelievable wisdom and omniscience of our God. He knows every little thing going on. He knows every large thing that's going on. He knows the beginning. He knows what happened, what's going to happen in the past. He knows prophecy. He knows everything. He is better than Bill Federer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He knows that. Every little ant, he knows what, where they are in a certain place. 
every and how many billions of ants would there be in, in this, on this earth? And the planets. God knows it. And he cares about us. The God who knows everything has that great a knowledge of every single thing from the microscope to the telescope. He knows everything there. He cares about people. He cares about people so much he became a man. God manifest in the flesh to die for us. To take our punishment upon him. So we can be forgiven and spend eternity with him. That's what he wants. But there needs to be that repentance in our place and turning to him. But God knows everything all the time. Psalm 147, verse 5. Say 147, verse 5 here. Uh, great is our Lord and great power. Now, get this next phrase here at the end of this verse. His understanding is what? Infinite. There's no end to it. Infinite. The power of God. The power of God. His knowledge, his understanding. He understands everything all the time. All the time. Here's the last thought tonight about why God, uh, what God knows and we don't. He knows why he does things, but we don't always know why he does things the way he does things. Yeah, we don't know the why. That's right. good. But just trust him anyway. Yeah. Love him anyway. Obey him anyway. Yeah. Don't question him. Yeah, that's, again, I guess Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. If you haven't memorized that verse, please do that. Yeah. that that's a powerful verse there. And it shows that God is never wrong. Never wrong. The power that he has. But he does all these things. And we don't always know why. Like I said before, Job kind of wondered why. He was guessing about things, talking about things. And God never did tell him why. He didn't realize again. Job was being used as a test. Between Satan and God. Who he would love the most. And, he, and, and here, here was Satan's test. Take something away from him. Let me get at him. And see if he still loves him. There's the test. So we, he didn't know that. We don't know why things happen. Uh, Christian, don't let discourage you if things are happening to you. You, you don't know why. Yeah. Maybe sometimes you do know why. Okay. Maybe there's things that you need to make right. Yes, but many times you don't know why. You think, I'm serving the Lord. I'm doing what I should be doing for the Lord. I confess my sins. I think my relationship is right with the Lord. Then why does this happen? Why is that? Why are these things happening? You don't need to know why. For one reason, God is testing you. Pass the test, Christian. Uh, even though you don't know why, I know some Christians, I think some of them are there, Christians too, they say, well, why is God allowing this? I, I think this is why God's allowed this. I think this is why. That's okay to make some guesses. I can guess. You can make some guesses, but don't even worry about that. It's just happened. Deal with it the Bible way. Deal with it the right way. I keep your love to the Lord. Keep serving Him. Be faithful. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't get angry at God. Can you imagine anybody being angry at God? Wow. Yeah, some people are. Just believe, even if he doesn't tell you why, say, that's all right. Because there are some things that God knows that we don't. That's right. And that's the way he wants it. That's the way he's chosen to do that. So what does God know that we don't? He knows the end from the beginning. He knows how it's going to end. And yeah, you've heard this a lot of times, and it's always good to hear it again. We win. Yeah. Christians win all the time. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows who will and who won't get saved. We don't. So you just keep praying for people. Don't stop. He knows a person's heart, thoughts, and motives. Nobody's ever going to fool God and deceive him. At the, at the what, great white throne jug, and I wonder what that's going to be like someday. Are people going to try to use their excuses yeah. with the Lord? The Lord who knows their hearts? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But he knows that. He knows a person's heart, thoughts, and motives better than we do. In fact, he knows them perfectly, perfectly. He knows your future sins and failures, and he still chooses to use you. He knows the things you might do wrong this coming week, this coming week, and he still chose, used to, cho uh, chose to use you. He knows the joys awaiting you, Christian. Don't quit. Don't give up. When I did the eulogy for Brother Bruce Musselman, that's one of the things I brought up in the eulogy about Brother Bruce. He says, you know, he never had a time when he was away from the Lord or cold or, as we would say, kind of in a backslidden condition. 
And Brother Bruce went through problems like everyone does. He had personal problems. He had difficulties. He went through all sorts. But he never, never lost the joy in the Lord. He kept serving all the time. Personally, he had some heartaches. But the joy is awaiting the Christian. And he's being rewarded for that, that far beyond what any of us deserves today. The joy is awaiting Christian. God knows about that. He's given us little uh, thoughts about that in the Bible. But he knows better than we do. And when we get there, it's going to be far beyond our imagination. That he knows everything all the time, everything going on, from that little ant crawling around to the number of hairs on our head or when a sparrow falls. God knows everything about the, all those things. And then also, he knows why these things are happening. We might not. Many times we don't. And that's all right. That's all right. There are things God knows that we don't. So trust Him. Believe Him. Amen. Surrender to Him. Yes. For those that have not accepted Him yet as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Surrender. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a God worthy of all that and more. Amen. And more. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for these thoughts tonight. I, I find it interesting that you know more than we do. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Thank you, Lord. You're all wise and omnipotent and omniscient, knowing all things, all powerful. From the telescope to the microscope, Lord, you know absolutely everything in this universe. That's how great you are, how wondrous you are, how omniscient and omnipotent you are. Thank you, Lord, for that. Now, as we have this time of prayer and time of invitation, I, I pray you will use this special time for our prayers, our needs. Maybe some of tonight. He wants to bow the knee and believe mm -hmm. on the Lord Jesus Christ. To surrender fighting to Him. Yes. To surrender fighting the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Knowing they need to be saved. They need to obey Him. Turn about the knee to Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So bless this invitation time for prayer requests and maybe someone even walk in the aisle to be saved. What a, what a time of rejoicing that would be tonight. In Jesus' name now I pray this.